What's going on guys, Culprit here, and today I'm going to give you my legitimate first impressions of Battlefield 4. Now some of you might be scratching your head saying, Culprit, you already did that. Well, not really. I gave you kind of my midnight launch experience. Uh, those were really kind of at a glance impressions of Battlefield 4, and what we came to discover is I was playing on a server that eventually changed the hardcore uh, right from underneath me, and I only figured it out step by step, uh, match by match, and then you know, looking back, that attributed to a lot of the issues I had, which is kind of funny, uh, like a total noob, but... Last night I played a lot more. Played several hours more. I played a couple different game modes. I have not played Rush yet. I'm I'm saving Rush. Rush is my baby. It's very special to me. I'm gonna play that over the weekend once I kind of have my feet under me a little more. Have you know my my sensitivities and my my settings and key bindings and all that stuff kind of figured out and and I'm comfortable again. Then I'm gonna play Rush where I can just focus on Rush, learning those maps, getting the real experience for myself because I, I I love Rush. Rush has always been my favorite game mode. But I've pretty much played most of the other ones. I haven't played uh, Diffuse. I haven't played uh, Squad Deathmatch, those types, but the main ones, the ones that come to mind when you think of Battlefield 4, I've, I've experienced at least a little bit. Um, and, of course, I'm always playing. I'm always looking at things. I'm always analyzing, even when I'm not playing. I'm driving my buddy digs at work crazy because I'm talking about it all the time. So I put a lot of thought into this, so I wanted to share some of the concepts with you guys because I know some of you do not have the game yet, and you're chomping at the bit to play the game. I think you're getting it very soon, today and tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken, correct? Or, I'm sorry, yeah, well, by the time this releases, today and tomorrow. Um... Yeah, so let's just get right into it. I'm going to start with the good. I'm going to finish with the bad. I don't think I have any ugly, but uh, maybe something will come to mind as I do the video, and we'll talk about that at the end. Uh, I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm just going to kind of talk about the biggest things on my mind. I don't want this to be a 30-minute video, and you guys all know I like to talk. So, the good. First, map design. I touched on this a little bit already. The map design is incredible. It's leaps and bounds ahead of Battlefield 3. Playing these maps, and now looking back on Battlefield 3, it, looks, it makes... The Battlefield 3 maps look so pedestrian. When you play like a Flood Zone, you play uh, Operation Locker, these maps, and then you go back and you look at Metro, and you look at even Grand Bazaar, which was a personal favorite, even Send Crossing, which I thought was one of the best maps in Battlefield 3 personally, um, they look so simplistic. You know, Grand Bazaar with the three alleyways, and that's really it. You have one or two crossing routes. That's it. Oh, boy. If you haven't played this game yet, wait until you get on Locker. Wait until you get into the Flood Zone. It's, it's, the options are crazy. I almost say it's it's almost it's where where close quarters DLC was too much. It was too random. People could come from any direction. This is not like that. There's at least a little logic to it. A little kind of makes some sense. It's not chaos. It's not complete chaos, which is a fine balance to get. And I do feel like they got it. Even certain maps, like I played um, Gullmud Railway. Is that what I, I'm not up on the uh, the names fully? And I kind of had passed that one off, saying that that's not for me. That's a vehicle map. It's not really going to be my thing. I enjoyed it, which is quite surprising for me. So I do very much love the map design. The map design in Battlefield 4 actually has me now excited for Second Assault DLC, where they're bringing Metro back, they're bringing Firestorm, they're bringing Oman, and what's a uh, Caspian, right? You know, these are, you know, I was, I'm, I'm actually kind of excited to see what they can do with Metro, because I've seen what they did with Locker, and I feel like Locker is what Metro should have been. I like the concept of Metro, where you're going from the park to the tunnels to the city. That's, that's a pretty cool idea, but they just executed it poorly. Well, with the template they have on Operation Locker and the other maps, I feel like they can maybe do Metro right, and it could be a really cool map, and the same goes for the other maps as well. So, very encouraged by that. It's probably the biggest thing that comes to mind to me when I think about my impressions of Battlefield 4 currently. Along with maps, map details. The maps are so rich and detailed, and there's just things everywhere to just look at, let alone f hide behind in, in things. It's not just random boxes of paper that make absolutely no sense why boxes of paper are in the middle of this bizarre market. Uh, but, you know, that that was Battlefield 3, and I'm not hating on it. love the game, but things just... It's so much more immersive now. There's there's trees and plants and, and organic matter, and, and then there's all, just all these things all around you. And the beauty of it is, and I'm going to get into this a little more... All these things destroy. All these things are destructible. If some guy's head glitching you from behind something, take out your new tube, take out your rocket, take it down. I love it. It's, it, it's great. The map details and just, just the polish they put on these things are, are much, much better than Battlefield 3, in my opinion. Something I'm going to note, grouping with friends, much easier. I love that system. It was in beta. If you experienced it, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, it just makes it easier to not only get in a game with the friends, get in a squad with the friends, and then obviously with that extra squad slot, it, it doesn't seem like much, but it does help you play, and it helps you play with more friends at once, obviously. That's a good, it's a good improvement. Um, system performance. I might have, should have led off with this, because, and the reason I didn't is because I feel like I'm one of the fortunate ones. I have had no problems with Battlefield 4. I had tons of problems with Battlefield 3 beta. I had tons of crashes, lockups, all kinds of things. Couldn't bind my keys perfectly. Um... I had a lot of issues with beta, I just shrugged it off. 
release my game runs friggin perfectly i don't know what sorcery they're doing over there at dice I have said before that how they got the current gen consoles to perform with Battlefield 3 was magic. I didn't understand it. And I feel like now, like, I honestly, in this game, in Battlefield 4, on Ultra, recording, I am getting at least the same, if not more occasionally, frames than I was getting Battlefield 3 with no system upgrades. I don't know how that's possible. I don't know who, what they've done. Obviously, it's better optimization. But, you know, reading forums, reading reddits, reading Twitter, I mean, a lot of people are having issues. And I acknowledge that. That's unfortunate. Um, a lot of guys were having a lot of issues, and I, I really can't comment that. I've had none of them. Um, I, I've updated my PC as much as I can, drivers, all those types of things, fresh Windows install. I'm running, running Windows 7, for those of you who are curious. I've had zero issues. I've had zero crashes, zero lockups. The game runs like a dream. It's incredibly smooth. I'm running and recording at Ultra now because I have the frames to spare. I'm running about 80, 90 frames. That's more than I was getting in Battlefield 3 where I ran everything on high just to squeak out some extra frames. I am incredibly impressed by the system performance, and I, I have to give a big kudos to DICE. It's it's kind of incredible what they've been able to do with uh, the enhanced gameplay. And lastly, on the good side, I'm going to touch on Levolution and Destruction. I'm going to lump them together. Now, Levolution is very cool. I haven't even seen all the Levolution events yet in the game, but uh, they're, they're very cool. You know, they're, they're quite... You can get quite... Uh, reaction the first time you see them but I, they are going to wear thin and, and they're to become a non-factor for me uh great selling points but they don't add a ton to kind of that wow factor if you've seen them a couple times some of them do interestingly change the level and that's great that's what they're designed to do so i'm very happy with that i'm even more happy with the level of destruction now i've gone on record saying the level of destruction in the battlefield beta was terrible it was embarrassing right well, it turns out that seems to have just been Siege of Shanghai, didn't have a lot of destruction. Other maps have tons of destruction. Now, you can't bring buildings down, per se, like you could in Bad Company 2. But just about every wall and any item you see strewn about, like a, a, a booth, a little wood wall, a tent, plants, whatever, cars, it's all destructible. If it's in your way, get it out of your way, however you want. Love that. It's, it gives a lot of room for creativity. It, it makes, you know, gunfights very different. And it makes you think, you know, like, as I've been carrying the new tube, I'm not a fan of the new tube. I, I hate the new tube when it's shooting at me. But I've really, now that I've had it since level one, it's a stock, you know, item. Um, I've learned it's very useful. It's a utility tool. It's not so much to kill as much as it's to, you know, hey, I need a route here right now. Boom. There's guys hiding behind that wall. Let me open it up. Get that car out of my way. I, I can't see the sniper in those trees. You know, these types of things. It's very useful. And that's all because of the micro destruction that they've added in Battlefield 4, which is very, very cool. Adds to the, the detail of the map as well. Now let's shift over to the bad. Some things I've absolutely noticed that I have to mention. I, I, I almost don't want to do this section, but you know me. I, I always have to you know kind of balance it out. Net code and hit detection. I'm gonna balance you know, bunch these two together. I don't really know what's going on. I want to tell you that it's just you know launch day, launch week. I don't know. There is clearly issues with net code. I'm getting shot around corners, things like that, way more than I did in Battlefield 3, and I'm noticing much worse hitboxes and hit detections in my mind. I have some clips that I've gone back and looked at after playing that are absolutely terrible. Some of them, yes, are probably my aim, and I'm not, you know, microbursting the weapon properly or whatnot, but I've been 10, 15 meters away from a guy, square on him, dead center in a chest, dumped a mag, and not gotten a single hit marker. It was to the point where I ran up to the guy and thought maybe he had died and glitched or something, but no, then the guy turned and killed me, so no spawn retraction, nothing like that. There, there's things going on. I'm hoping it's server side. I'm hoping they get fixed. That's really all I can say. There are big issues with netcode and hit detection. Big concerns there for me. Um, I've mentioned this before as well in the beta, and, and it's been kind of a big problem for me. It's not as big as I thought it was, and that was dying quickly. Instant hit. Like I said in my uh, Midnight Launch Impressions video, I was dying really quick, and I couldn't figure it out. And it only happened after I thought about it that I realized that I had, you know, they switched the server to a hardcore server. And, of course, that's why I couldn't spawn on the squad leader. That's why I couldn't uh, see the kill cam, and that's why I got killed by my friendly fire. <laughs> And then, of course, it dawned on me that Hardcore has less health as well, so yes, you're going to die a lot quicker. Now, the hit notifications are not so great. I'm going to do a separate video on that, one of the issues I see with it that I'd like to see changed. But you still do die quicker than a Battlefield 3, which is not something I like. I think I could live with it where it's at, but I'd love to see it still tone back a little more. But maybe if they made the hit notifications, A, work a little better, and B, be a little more noticeable, there's a lack of visual and audio cues to you taking damage. And a lot of times you're running around, you don't realize you're even hurt. And I see this with everybody. I see medics running around at two-thirds health, 
and they can heal themselves up whenever they want. They don't realize they're hurt. This is an issue. Should be fixable. Not that big a deal, but it, it kind of does affect gameplay right now. One thing that is absolutely affecting gameplay that I hate, that I hate, is the mag dump reload system. Now, we've been told by DICE officially that this was a, a bug, and it's not meant to be the default setting. It's meant to be a hardcore-only feature or something on a server you can turn on as an admin. Unfortunately, as I've read up a little bit, nothing from DICE officially, mind you, um, this has been kind of bugged that now this is set as default on the server side, you know, checkboxes where it should be just an opt-in or hardcore feature. We'll see. I've been reaching out to the community managers trying to get an official word on this. Nobody's giving me one and it's starting to worry me. I hate this system. The system is an interesting concept. I will give it that. It would be a cool concept I would like to play with friends on a TeamSpeak server. It has no place in a public server environment, though, because you cannot count on other people to help you reload. And people always tell you to, you know, conserve your ammunition. That's fine. But remember, Battlefield 3, they encourage you to reload often. They gave you the quicker reload speed, and they also gave you the plus one in the chamber, you know, bullets. They wanted you to reload a lot. They, they taught us to do that. And now they t flip at 180, and they're penalizing you for reloading too much. Now keep in mind, the high fire rate weapons get penalized for this because it's really hard to conserve, an am conserve ammo with a super high fire rate weapon. And even the lower, like the Scar H, it has 21 rounds in the magazine. You you shoot at one guy, now you're, you're kind of like your ass is hanging out there. You don't know if you can take on two guys if you come around a corner. I like when they make you make decisions. I don't like when they force you to make decisions that limit your ability to play the game. This slows the game down a lot. I played TDM last night. I usually love TDM. I did not like it last night because it was very, very slow. People were pretty much afraid to shoot. And that's a problem. It limits gameplay. It punishes good gameplay. It, I mean, you get on a three or four kill streak, you're just getting rolling. Now you got to look for another gun. Problem is, all the guns on the ground have like one magazine left in them. It's a problem. It, it, it's. I'm not saying take it out of the game. Keep it in the game. Let it be opt-in for servers. And let it be a hardcore feature. I think it's, it has a really nice home in hardcore. So I, I don't dislike the function. It just should not be the default function. If they insist on keeping this in there, they need to give us more starting ammo at the very least. Now, I do have another reload concept that's brilliant that I got off of one of my videos I posted on Pixel Enemy. I'm going to do a whole video on that, so look for that in the next couple days. I think it's a really good idea. And I, I, I honestly, I think it's the way I'd like to see them go, but I doubt they will make a change like that at this point. Let's move on here. One other issue that bothers me is like the spawn seizure. It's just, it, it drives me crazy. When you're fighting and you're running around and one of your teammates spawns in you, like PSA guys, if you're playing with guys in TeamSpeak and you're about to spawn on your buddy, give them the decency, let them know. <laughs> let them prepare, let them not get in a gunfight because what happens when someone spawns on you, I don't know if it's intentionally it vibrates you to let you know, or if it's just a you know the, the character collision model. You know when you run into people, you always kind of have that little bit of lag and rubber banding. It's the collision, you know, the code. It doesn't work so hot, and when people spawn on you, you get that too. So you, if you're in the middle of a gunfight and someone spawns on you, you start shaking, and you're probably going to lose that gunfight. It's really annoying. You're penalized for doing nothing. You're penalized for being alive and being a spawn point. It's, it's not how it should be. One big issue I had is I was playing last night, and I'm running across the street, or maybe I'm engaged in a firefight, or, or I'm trying to run across the street and dodge fire, someone spawns in on me, and he spawns in front of me, standing still, and now I run into him, we're both doing this lag rubber band, Michael J. Fox shaking in the middle of the street, and we both die, and it's really frustrating. They need to do one of two things. They need to, A, make sure he always spawns behind you, you know, Bad Company 2 pops out of your ass, or or, or give, give some five feet, or, you know, or how about we just don't let people spawn on other people when you're in combat? You already have the checks for this. If you look at the spawn screen and you select a friend in your squad, it'll tell you warning, warning, warning. And that means he's in a gunfight right now. He's in combat. He, they're warning you that. Why not make just a check, an if-then, and if he's in combat, he's not available to spawn. They had a Medal of Honor Warfighter. It's a pretty cool feature. It's in there. Why not use it? I, I think that would be a good way to go about this because it's kind of infuriating if you're the guy alive and you're in a gunfight and a guy spawns on you and you have a seizure and then you lose. It, it's, it's a little annoying. Um... One lot of minor thing, it's kind of the flip side to the good side of the map details. I do have a hard time seeing people, and I've, I'm not the only one that's heard this. I've seen quite a bit of us on Twitter. That some of this is us just getting used to the new environments. You have to play the maps, you have to play the environments, you have to train your eye and your brain to realize what's normal, what's, what's supposed to be there, what silhouettes are proper, and then when you see something that doesn't fit, you'll recognize it, focus on it, and, and attack it, theoretically. But I, obviously that will happen in time. But there is a lot of detail on these maps. There's a lot of, you know, lush trees and bushes and jungle. There's a lot of little tiny items and counters with baskets and these types of things. It's much harder to see people. You have to be more careful. You have to play a little slower. You have to be more, you know, more... 
uh, confident in the area is secure. There's also a lot of undulating elevations. Like, there's not really a lot of big, wide open, flat areas where you get a long line of sight. So, you know, for the next 100 yards, you don't have anybody coming. A lot of times you're surprised by people because even if it's an open area, I'm thinking the, the swamps on Flood Zone or, you know, around the hotel resort, maybe playing Domination. See, it's more open, right? But the hills kind of undulate a little bit and there's little half walls and things. There's ways for guys to get pretty close to you without being seen, and then you both stumble on each other. Not bad. They're still fun gunfights, but it's 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 a lot harder to spot people at, at an early time to deal with them. And last but not least, I'm gonna touch on. It's not really to do with the game, but battle log is a mess. Uh, they don't have a lot. They don't have a queue. There's no platoons. The friends limit. Uh, we've been talking on uh, on Twitter about that right now. Uh, it's just a mess. It's not working very well, and, and it's it's kind of frustrating. Uh, of all the things, it seems like that has been kind of neglected, and it needs quite a bit of work. Uh, I'm, I'm hoping they will, you know, they, like they don't show the ticket, the, the server tickets, when you click on a server. Now, I know there's a different rank, official and ranked and all that stuff, but show me the tickets and show me the progress of the match, you know, that kind of stuff. Where's the server queue? How do you not have a server queue? You're, you're, you're touting Battlefield Premium as a, you know, priority queue, but you don't have a queue. It, it's... It's kind of crazy, uh, irritating. I, I hope they're going to get it fixed. I believe there's like a big battle log patch on November 19th or something that I think I've seen floated around. So hopefully that a lot of that stuff will get remedied. I don't know. Uh, I have no idea. I don't understand why I'm still restricted to 100 friends. It's really not that many people. I know it sounds like it is, but it's not, especially as a YouTuber. I would love to have more people to be able to play with. Isn't that the point of a, of a team-based game? Uh, I don't know. So let's clean up battle log too. But again, that's a little more secondary. But... Other than that, guys, I know I've just kind of went on a little bit of a rant about certain things, but I've, I'm going to have a really good time. And the bottom line for me is I'm at work, I'm, I'm at the dinner table, I'm wherever. I can't wait to get home and play. Uh, and I, I, that's what you want. I, I think there's a lot to sink my teeth into. Like I said, I'm, 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 I'm engrossed in the game already, and I haven't even played what is normally my favorite game mode. I haven't really played much obliteration either and kind of gotten into the tactics and strategy of that. Very much looking forward to that. And then, you know, obviously we have um, China Rising coming December 3rd. We do have Second Assault coming at some point. I know it's going to be available for Xbox One on launch. That will be, what, third week in November? So I would imagine it will be available for everyone very soon. So we could really kind of logically say before the first of the year, uh, we have two more, you know, DLCs that are coming out and eight more maps, which will be pretty sweet. We'll be sitting there with 18 maps, which is a pretty good number to play for a while into the spring and I, i'm looking forward to it guys so let me know like always in the comments what your thoughts are how are you experiencing it are you having some issues are you not having issues you got any tips and tricks for me that i can then pass on to people because like i said a lot of guys are just going to start getting their hands on the game today and tomorrow so let's help them out if we can guys like always guys thanks so much for your support i really do appreciate it hit the like button if you enjoyed the video and make sure to check back for me in the future there'll be a lot more coming thanks a lot guys take care